non-living. What is meant by non-living? A silicon particle, sand particle, composed of silica and oxygen. In silica, there is a nucleus, electrons revolving around that. So sand particle has got electron, proton, neutron, and the proton and neutron in the nucleus, electrons revolving around the nucleus at the speed of something like 2182 kilometers per second. Who is giving energy for revolving this, for the revolution of the electrons? Electrons are revolving continuously. That two very specific orbital, very specific pathway, every electron is revolving very systematically, correct speed through the correct well destined pathway. Who has given the energy? Who has given the pathway? Why? Electron is negatively charged one, not falling into the positively charged nucleus. Nucleus is positively charged, you know. Positively charged nucleus, negatively charged electron. They should attract each other, no? Positive charges and negative charges attract each other. That you can see in front of any women's college. So positive charge and negative charge always attract. But still, electrons are not falling in the nucleus. Why it is not falling in the nucleus? Ah, I don't know. You cannot create an atom. It is the basic thing. I repeat the sentence. Even though you are a super scientist, you cannot create an atom. You cannot destroy an atom. Whether you are an IIT professor or you are an IISC professor, you cannot. Atom is such a small particle. Constructing an atom impossible for you. You can manipulate an atom, that's all. So, Indian spirituality, when you go to the deepest core, purely scientific, that is Sanamatana Dharma's basic principle. Some people used to ask me, Sir, you say Brahma Chaitanya Mandatati, but some sannyasis used to say, Saguna Brahma and Nirguna Brahma. What is Saguna Brahma and Nirguna Brahma? I used to ask them, do you know the English word for Saguna Brahma and Nirguna Brahma? No, there is no equivalent English word, no? Saguna Brahma, useful Brahma. Nirguna Brahma, useless Brahma. There is nothing like that. Saguna Brahma is not useful Brahma. Nirguna Brahma is useless Brahma. No, there is another translation. Some of you may be knowing that. Shukla Ejur Veda and Krishna Ejur Veda. Many of you might have heard, I am sure, since it is Madra. Shukla Ejur Veda, what is translation in English? Shukla Ejur Veda is white Ejur Veda. Krishna Ejur Veda is black Ejur Veda. What does it mean? Black Ejur Veda? There is no meaning for black Ejur Veda. But you see, Weber's you take, McDonald's you take, uh, uh, Max Muller's you take, they always use the word Black Ejur Veda. Many, many of the foreign writers use White Ejur Veda and Black Ejur Veda. But it does not convey you anything wrong way. Saguna Brahma and Nirguna Brahma. There is no equivalent English word. You have to use only Saguna and Nirguna. Some people used to say Saguna Brahma and Nirguna Brahma are opposite to each other. No, Saguna opposite to Nirguna. That is all right. Just like upper opposite lower. You know that, no? Lower opposite, upper. Upper opposite, lower. That every one of you know. But upper primary, opposite lower primary. Is it so? Upper primary and lower primary cannot be opposite to each other. Upper primary and lower primary are complementary to each other, not contradictory to each other. Like that, Saguna opposite Nirguna, 
but Saguna Brahmam and the Saguna Brahmam are not opposite. They are complementary. How can we explain that? Simple example. One example is enough for you to understand that. Now you know, if you are sitting in a bus here, you are Madras, Metro bus, its speed is something like 60 kilometers, you will be comfortably sitting. Suppose its speed went up to 90 kilometers, you started vibrating. Suppose the speed of the bus goes up to 100 kilometers per hour, then one fellow will go and ask the driver, don't go this speed, come down. The 100 kilometer in Madra city is very dangerous. Actually, driver may obey that, may not obey that. But 100 kilometer in the bus, you cannot tolerate. But you know, at what speed at present you are revolving? You are revolving at a speed of 1640 kilometers per hour. Earth is revolving, rotating. Earth is rotating at a speed of 1640 kilometers. Earth is revolving around the sun at a speed of 35,500 kilometers per hour. Earth is revolving around the sun at the speed of 35,500 kilometers per hour. This solar system is revolving in the galaxy at the speed of 69,500 kilometers per hour. At the speed of 69,000. This galaxy is moving towards the center of the universe at the speed of 72,000 kilometers per minute. 72,000 kilometers per minute. None of you are going and telling the Ayurveda that the speed is to be reduced. Why you are not telling? You know, are not feeling that. The rotatory speed, revolutionary speed, and the movement of this universe, you are this, I mean, this, uh, this galaxy, you are not feeling that. So even though all these movements are taking place, rotation and revolution are taking place, that is Sadhunatvam, you are not feeling that. That is Nirgunatvam. Exactly movement is taking place, Sadhunatvam is there, you are not feeling that. That is Nirgunatvam. Just like take one piece of laddu in your hand. It's very easy, you know, everybody can take a laddu. Ask the laddu one question. Nobody should see asking a question to laddu. If somebody is seeing that you are asking a question to laddu, they will think that you have got some problem. Ask the question to laddu, what you are made of? The laddu will say, I am made of sugar. Okay, what is the sugar made of? Sugar is made of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Ask again the laddu, what is this carbon, hydrogen and oxygen is made of? The laddu will say it is made of proton, neutron, electron. Ask the laddu, what is the electrons doing? Electrons are revolving as I told you at 2182 kilometers. But laddu is not revolving. Electron is revolving. So in the laddu, the nucleus is spinning 32 million times per second. Nucleus is spinning, but laddu is not spinning. Electrons are revolving, but laddu is not revolving. What does it mean? Even though every bit of the fundamental particles are working with sadhunatvam, violent force, we see they are standing still, nirgunatvam. How? Just like a baby lies on the mat, we see that the baby is lying silently. No, the heart of the baby is beating. Breathing takes place, blood circulation takes place, digestion takes place, and nutrition are taken to every cell of the body. So body is sagunatvam, even though the baby is lying, just like the So we can, we have got purely scientific explanation for Indian spirituality. What I wanted to convey as a first point I told you, Indians never told, advised anybody to follow anything blindly, systematically analyze and follow. That is the fundamental principle of 
Indian Sanatana Dharma, second Indian spirituality is pure science, third one Indian acharyas are also purely scientific. And when you say an acharya is performed, it is not for going to heaven. Achara Lavadekya Yuhu Achara Dhanamakshayam Achara Lavade Supraja Acharu Hantya Lakshanam For health, energy, friendship, social life and psychological benefit. This is the reason why we follow Achara. Not for directly going to heaven. I am sure that None of the people in Kerala and Tamil Nadu is going to go to heaven. Because that is full. Heaven is already full. So we don't have any vacancy. We never do that much Mahapunyam. We are all partly Mahababis. Sure, from your face I can clear that we are all Mahababis. Doing Mahababa, not, I am not telling you are seniors. Eh? You are all Amatasya Putra. But the vacancy in, in Swargam is very less. Very few seats are available. That takes already taken by great great people, not like us. So our seat is fully reserved in Mahanaraka. The ration card will be available, everything will be available there, but not as comfortable as Swarga. So our Acharyas are not for going to heaven, but remember the word, not for going to heaven, but Acharyas are meant for making earthly life heaven making this life heaven. We want to live here and as in the heaven. That is why we follow acharas. So, Achinoti cha shastra akkaan sishyan sadhayate sudhi swayam acharati chaiva saha acharya it is for that. Acharas are to be analyzed systematically. Acharas to be performed by everyone who is advising for that. Acharas are to be taught with the examples to others. That person is called Achara. So, Achara has got, customs and rituals have got a beautiful aim, fantastic aim of converting Naraka into Swarga in this earth itself. Converting Naraka into Swarga when you live here. That is our Achara's aim. So we never say that. After death, you will be going to heaven. So you have to perform this Achara. See, I, have, I was giving you an example of Surya Namaskara. Suppose the father tells his son, you should perform Surya Namaskara early morning so that the son God will come, put his hand on your head and he will be blessing you. Suppose father is telling like that, Surya Nibhida Vamma, Talayiri Kai Vecha, Ningale Anikra Shikyum Enna, Achchan Maganodu Paranyonu Vijayarikya. Think that the, the father is telling like this, then the son, son will definitely ask, when Surya Deva comes from the here to Tamil Nadu, this place, and putting his hand on our head, I am sure that there will not be Madras, there will not be Tamil Nadu, there will not be South India. Because the temperature of sun is 6 million degrees centigrade. Outside the temperature of sun is 1 million degrees centigrade. Can you believe that sun will be coming there from here, from there to here and putting his hand on your head? Then Krishna Rama go in that. That is the end of the news. So it is not that sun is going to come here. But you are performing Surya Namaskara through that way. Your body, you are activity. How? Seven yogasanas. One Surya Namaskara has got seven yogasana. Seven yogasana, you are going in ten steps. That is why you are energized. So, many of the abnormalities of the body can be cured by Surya Namaskara. So, Achara is for converting our sick body into healthy body. That is the Achara. So like this you can see Indian customs and rituals. Achara Prabhavo Dharma Dharmasya Prabhu Achyuta. What is meant by Dharma? Sanatana Dharma means an aggregation of Achara. 
Sanatana Dharma means aggregation of Achara. What is the Achara? You know, Achara connected with taking the food. Bhakshanam Kalikinda in the Achara Nandana. People say, we take the food. What is there, the Achara? Achara in taking food is so elaborate. You know, you should not take food while standing. You should not take food in the, in the boat. You should not take food while traveling in the bus or cart. You should not take food which is cooked by a boy which is below 8 years. You should not take the food cooked by a patient. You should not take the food cooked by a person who is above 75 years of old age. You should not take the food which is prepared using the vegetable whose background you don't know. You should not take any food which is over hot, I mean, which is very hot. You should not take the food which is very cold. You should not take the food which is prepared previous day. Now we take only previous day's food because fridge is available. So, you should not take any food which has got meat or something like that, whose the background of the meat is not known. And you should not take the food which is prepared in Smashana. You should not take the food during the time of Grahana. You should not take the food at the time of Trisamdhya. You should not take the food which is given in a dirty vessel. These are all acharas connected with food. I told you a few. There are 480 acharas connected with taking food, connected with preparing food. Jack, what I wanted to convey you, all these acharas, Matra Dharma, when we say Sanatana Dharma, this is a part of Sanatana Dharma is Matra Dharma. Part of Sanatana Dharma is Pitra Dharma. Part of Sanatana Dharma is Putra Dharma. Part of Sanatana Dharma is Paura Dharma. Part of Sanatana Dharma is Purohita Dharma. Part of Sanatana Dharma is Acharya Dharma. When all these dharmas are put together, we get Sanatana Dharma. Then what is Acharya Dharma? Acharya has got a series of acharas. All these acharas together we call Acharya Dharma. All the acharas that to be performed by mother we call Matru Dharma. So Sanatana Dharma is systematic adjustment, analysis, understanding and the following of all these acharas. Correctly, this is another dharma. And you know, exactly like our scientific temper, exactly like our um, spirituality, exactly like our acharas, we have a li uh, literature. We say, Veda mantras should not be chanted by a non Brahmin. Is it correct? Veda mantras can be chanted by anybody provided he has the capacity to chant that. He has got the capacity to chant. No, the religion and the caste was not appearing. Say for example, Lord Krishna. Krishna was not a Brahmin. Krishna was OBC, other backward community. Sri Rama was not Brahmin. Sri Rama was Kshatriya. Veda Vyasa was not a Brahmin. He born in, in fisherman family. Vishwamitra was not Brahmin, Kshatriya family. And Dronacharya was a Brahmin. Got converted into Kshatriya. That's why he came to Kshetra. Otherwise, Dronacharya is not permitted to come there. He's a Brahmin. He got converted into Kshatriya and came there. You know that N.T. Ramarao was not a Kshatriya. Got converted into Kshatriya by calling 14 sannyasis from Himalaya. And N.T. Ramarao of Andhra got converted into Kshatriya Pilam by performing three days Yagam. Chandra Babu Naidu was not a Kshatriya. He got converted into Kshatriya halfway. The sannyasis came to know that this is not that good man. They went back to Himalaya. After performing half yajna, they went back. So, he did not convert to fully, only 50% converted. So, what I wanted to convey, if you can get yourself elevated to that level, then you can chant this way, the snowball. Shudra opi sila sambanno, brahmana kunavan bhave, brahmano vikriya hina, shudra pratyavaro bhave. So, whomsoever may be you as a person, Janmanal Jayate Martya, Karmanal Jayate Vita, 
ब्रह्मज्ञानी नैव ब्रह्मणा